Good morning, everyone. Great to see everyone here. I'm Anthony Freud, General Director of Lyric Opera, and it's a pleasure to welcome all of our guests here today, as well as those tuning in via our live web stream. We'll be discussing today two major artistic projects for the company. Uh, once everyone has given their comments, all of us would be happy to take questions from any of the media representatives. Together with our music director, Sir Andrew Davis, I'm announcing today that Lyric Opera will present a new production of Richard Wagner's monumental four opera masterpiece, Der Ring des Nibelungen, The Ring of the Nibelung, starting in 2016-17. As in its two previous presentations at Lyric, The Ring will be staged as individual operas, um, Das Rheingold 2016-17 season, Die Valkyrie in the 2017-18 season, Siegfried in 1819, um, and then the company will conclude its 1920 season with individual performances of Goethe Demerung prior to presenting three complete ring cycles. And I'm joined today by the production's formidable creative team. Sir Andrew Davis, who will conduct, um, David Poutney, the director, set designer, Johann Engels, um, costume designer, Marie-Jeanne Lecker, and lighting designer, Fabrice Cabour. Um, I'm thrilled to announce that we have two internationally celebrated artists who will be central to the success of this production. Um, our soprano, Christine Gerke, who will be singing Brunhilde and is with us today, and bass baritone, Eric Owens, who will make his role debut as Wotan. Eric is listening to us now, we hope, and will be joining us later uh, via Skype, the Skype gods permitting. <laughs> Wagner's Ring is one of the most iconic and fascinating music and stage works ever created. It represents the high watermark of our art form, unique in its scale, its complexity, its fascination, and indeed in, in, in its ability to hook an audience. Experience a ring, experiencing a ring cycle is one of the most life-transforming artistic experiences the world has to offer, and I'm absolutely thrilled with the team that we have assembled to create that experience at Lyric. Andrew. Yes, um, the ring uh, truly, of course, is one of the most notable achievements, most extraordinary achievements, not only in music, but really in the whole of... Um, Western culture. Wagner takes the Nordic sagas and made them, for his time, extremely modern. Uh, I was just, I had, I just went on a trip and I thought, oh, I need to take something to read with me. And, and completely at random, it seemed that perhaps my subconscious was prompting me, I took the Odyssey with me. And, of course, what's fascinating is to look at Homer's gods and then to look at Wagner's gods, and they're really quite remarkably similar in some ways. <laughs> they're all very badly behaved and, um, <laughs> a and, and sort of sow the seeds of their own destruction, in a way. And that's, of course, what, what The Ring is all about. So there the, the are great moral questions, ethical questions, uh, that, uh, that are raised during the course of The Ring. And... Uh, it, it's really uh, about the demise of, of the gods and the, and the rise of man uh, at its root. I mean, this is the gods, um, because of their actions, as I say, sowed the seeds of their own destruction, and, and who should appear to, to, um, to take over but Siegfried, who, who represents the best the, of the aspirations of mankind, and I think this is one of the most fascinating aspects of the piece. Of course, there are all sorts of issues, loyalty, love, independence, looking for something new that um, really make the piece speak to any age, and certainly to our own. For any company with the resources to present it, The Ring offers the most formidable challenges in the entire repertoire. Um, the four operas demand from performers and production team alike profound interpretive intelligence and extraordinary technical prowess. Uh, Sir Andrew Davis is known worldwide for his virtuosity in a wide range of repertoire. Wagner is one of his great passions, 
and his extraordinary ability to convey its architecture, its emotion, its luminosity are evident from his performances of the major Wagner operas here at Lyric, which we've been proud to present, most recently, of course, Meistersinger uh, and Parsifal. From the first conversation I had with Andrew um, upon my appointment as general director, it was clear that one of his greatest artistic priorities over the next 10 years was to revisit the ring. Andrew has scored some of his greatest successes at Lyric in Wagner. Uh, since the 2000-2001 season, when he made his debut in Wagner at Lyric with the Flying Dutchman, he's led two different productions of Parsifal, as well as the four ring operas, Tristan, Lohengrin, and Meistersinger. He led his, his first complete ring cycle during the company's 50th anniversary season in 2004-05 and his achievements in Wagner also include uh, a new production of Lohengrin that marked his Bayreuth Festival debut. Our director, David Poutney, is an artist of immense distinct distinction and integrity uh, with whom I've collaborated on a regular basis over nearly 20 years, first at Welsh National Opera and then at Houston Grand Opera. He has had a long and distinguished career in an enormously wide repertoire, directing productions ranging from the intimate to the spectacular. At Lyric, he's previously directed Philip Glass's Satyagraha and Kurt Weill's Street Scene. Among David's credits in Wagner are The Valkyrie at English National Opera, where he was director of productions, Tristan und Isolde at Cologne Opera, and The Flying Dutchman at Welsh National Opera, where he's currently executive and artistic director. His productions worldwide have encompassed a staggering stylistic range, including many world premieres. David has made an enormously significant contribution to Czech opera, including Jana Czech's works, staged at Welsh National Opera, Scottish Opera, San Francisco, Vienna, and Munich. He's directed a vast range of operas all over the world. His productions have been seen in many major houses, including the Met, Deutsche Oper Berlin, Opernhaus Zürich, the Opera Nationale de Paris, Salzburg Festival, and the Vienna State Opera. During his tenure as Intendant of Austria's Bregenz Festival, David's trailblazing productions included the 2010 world premiere of The Passenger, uh, which was subsequently presented in Warsaw, London, and Karlsruhe in Germany, Martinu's The Greek Passion, uh, which was reprised at Covent Garden, and Szymanowski's King Roger, uh, which was reprised in Barcelona. Andrew? Well, I've known David's work for uh, very many years, um, since the, the heady days when he was director of production uh, well, at um, ENO in London, and I'm, we were just talking about, for instance, a fantastic production of, a, of the um, uh, Janacek opera, uh, The Excursions of Mr. Brauchek, as we was almost never seen, and he made it into such a delight, and there were so many other, uh, uh, others of his uh, operas that I saw over the years there, that, uh, and uh, I personally, we were talking about Janacek, um, I had the great pleasure of finally conducting his production of The Cunning Little Vixen, which uh, at La Scala, and that's that's a piece that had been around for a long time, and it proved its worth. And and uh, his his work is so creative and fantastic, and extraordinarily varied in style. I think that's one of the things that I, I love about it. He's 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 never kind of had a tunnel vision about what he does. He. he seems to approach every new work with, with, a, with a fresh and clean slate, ready to put his colors onto it. David, so give us a, a, an idea of your approach to the ring. Well, um, first of all, let me say what a thrilling opportunity this is for, for me and for my wonderful team over there. We've, we've been through many projects together, but, but this is definitely the biggest and the most exciting, and it's a kind of fulfillment of, of, of I suppose, the communal expertise that we've honed over the years in, in, with many different productions. Um, we've already heard the, the, the word saga, and I would like to start from that point. Um, I don't want to get into too much detail about our ideas at this point, but um, one thing which is very important to me is the idea of the saga as 
an epic narration. And I think that the, the process of storytelling and the method of storytelling is something that is very important to us in the way that we are developing this, this, con the, this concept for the ring. And the other thing I would like to emphasize is that this was a 20 year or so project for Wagner in which he wrote down the words in uh, the reverse order. So the Goethe Demeron was actually the first opera he wrote the words for and Rheingold was the last. So in terms of his development as an artist, Goethe Demeron is the most old fashioned of the four operas and Rheingold is the most radical. And he then wrote the music in the right order, so that of the four operas, Rheingold is, has the most, let's say, conservative Wagnerian music. And Goethe Demerung uh, leaps into a whole world, and he happened to have just knocked off a couple of minor masterpieces called Tristan and Meistersinger in the middle, uh, and then started with the last part of the last act of Siegfried and Goethe Demerung. So those two pieces are by far and away the most developed in musical style. And that's why uh, for us um, it became very important to think of these pieces as four different pieces with an interlocking narrative. Uh, so we are very much interested in celebrating the difference between those pieces as much as their similarity in terms of the characters that connect them and the incidents that connect them. So I'm really excited about the idea of, of a narrative ring in which the richness and diversity of these four pieces is really laid out for the audience to experience and to stimulate their imaginations. Great, thank you. Now let me introduce um, the other key members of the team. Um, as David said, they've all worked together uh, regularly on a variety of, of major projects. Uh, Johan Engels, the eminent South African designer, uh, returning to us after making his debut with us earlier this season uh, as the designer of our new Pasifal. He's designed the ring uh, at the Opéra de Marseille uh, and other monumental works like Berlioz the Trojans at the Deutsche Oper Berlin. His designs have been uh, hailed in the major houses of London, Vienna, Zurich, Salzburg and Bregenz festivals uh, and the Royal Shakespeare Company uh, among countless other prestigious venues. Costume designer Marie-Jeanne Lecker is born in Romania, based in London, where her work in opera has included Covent Garden's recent production of The Ring. She's a frequent collaborator of today's major directors in seemingly every important European theater and opera house, as well as in North America. French lighting designer Fabrice Cabour, whose designs over the past 20 years have been seen in more than 200 productions from the Vienna State Opera and the Comédie Française to the 15th Asian Games in Doha, Qatar. Uh, and incidentally, he was the lighting designer for the Marseille ring that I mentioned earlier. And you'll find in your packets complete biographies of all these distinguished artists. In Lyric's ring, one of the most uh, remarkable dramatic sopranos of our time, Christine Gerke, will be our Brunhilde, and the magnificent bass baritone Eric Owens will sing his first Wotan. They both enjoyed wonderful successes here at Lyric, Christine as Strauss's Elektra, and Eric both as General Leslie Groves in Dr. Atomic by John Adams and in the title role of Handel's Hercules. For the ring, they're the dream team two extraordinary singing actors with unique qualities that make them predestined for Wagner repertoire. As we know, Die Walküre is one of the great examples of a double act opera with its exploration of a Wotan Brynhilde's profoundly moving father-daughter relationship. Andrew, you worked with Christine very recently in Electra. <laughs> yes, yes we did and what an absolute thrill and delight it was um, Electra is one of the most demanding of all roles. Uh, it requires enormous stamina. It needs a good deal of volume <laughs> at times. Even with a sensitive conductor, <laughs> even with a sensitive conductor like me, keeping the orchestra down. Um, 
But uh, 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 Christine, <laughs> Christine possesses much more than this. There's, there's a great beauty in her voice. There's an extraordinary quality of musicianship in the way she, she, she can spin a phrase that's sort of second to none, really, I would say, in, um, in, in the world today. And I think she's going to be a fantastic Brunhilde. And it will be an, an enormous success to, to rank with all the other successes that you're having everywhere else. So I, I can't say enough about how thrilled I am that you're going to be with us for this very important event. And say a few words about Eric, Andrew. Eric uh, is... <laughs> Listening. Eric is... Wait, wait, huh? <laughs> there he is. Yeah. There, there he is. is. Look Listening. at that. A miracle. Oh, oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I'm a, a, I'm an immense fan of Eric. He's he's such a <laughs> just sit there and behave yourself. Um, <laughs> I, I'm such an enormous fan of Eric. I mean, his 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 flexibility uh, is extraordinary. He's he sings in a, an incredible variety and and a range of repertoire for one thing. Um, his his Alberich in the Met Ring was unbelievably impressive. Um, we've worked together a couple of times, um, and I even asked if he could do something a few days ago, which he couldn't, unfortunately. But um, uh, and hearing his Alberich, well, we were both struck by the fact that this is a great Alberich, but it's going to be an even greater Votan. So it, it was. Um, with, with great pleasure that we approached him, uh, and he was thrilled, and, and I think he's also very excited at the, the, the idea that, that we, we will build up this ring over a number of years, and, mm. and uh, I can't say enough about how delighted I am. Christine Stacher, as one of today's foremost dramatic sopranos, was confirmed with her triumphs as Electra both here in Madrid uh, and at Covent Garden, as well as her um, success uh, only a few weeks ago um, as the Dyer's Wife in the Met's uh, revival of Die Frauen und Schatten. She's been announced as Brynhilde for ring cycles at Houston Grand Opera and at the Met. Um, last season, she sang her first Dyer's Wife with Dutch radio. Uh, she sang Ortrud uh, in Lohengrin at the Deutsche Oper Berlin, and her first Valkyra Brynhilde with the New Zealand Symphony. I've had the pleasure of working with her several times uh, in Houston, and a variety of leading roles has brought her to La Scala, the Opera Nationale de Paris, Maggio Musicale Fiorentino, San Francisco, uh, Opera Theatre of St. Louis, and Japan's Saito Kinan Festival. Eric's association with the Wagner repertoire includes the Dutchman in Sydney, Hunding in Baltimore and Dallas, and as Andrew has already said, his triumphant Alberich um, in the Met Ring. This season, his Alberich will be heard at the Vienna State Opera. He's returning to Lyric, actually, in a few days' time um, to begin rehearsals um, as Vodnik, the water goblin in Rusalka. He was previously heard um, at Lyric as Handel's Hercules uh, and in Dr. Atomic, um, the role of General Leslie Groves, which he created um, in San Francisco and then reprised at both Amsterdam uh, and the Met. He's premiered other challenging contemporary roles, including the title character of Grendel in Los Angeles and the storyteller in A Flowering Tree in Vienna. Um, and his other operatic appearances have included major successes uh, in Covent Garden, in San Francisco, uh, in Paris, uh, and in many other places. Christine, I think it was shortly before Electra opened um, in the fall of 2012 that I offered you Brynhilde mm -hmm. in our new ring. Uh, how did you feel about that? Slightly excited. Um, <laughs> I can't actually repeat what I said because that would be rude. But it was an expletive. Um, I, I couldn't be more excited about this. I'm so grateful. And in fact, what I was told was, you mustn't say anything. So later that day, <laughs> when Maestro came up to talk to me, I pretended not to know what he was talking about. He said, you can tell me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm completely overjoyed. It's such an honor to be part of this. Um, I have been asked to be part of a few rings in the last year or so, which every single one of them, it's, it's a remarkable honor. But 
this is the first time I'm going to have an opportunity to be able to build something from the ground up and to be able to do it in this house with this creative team. It's, it's more than an honor, it's a joy and I feel incredibly grateful. Thanks. Eric, how do you feel about your doing, doing your first Votan here at Lyric? I'm very excited. Oh, getting a little bit echo. I'll get used to that. <laughs> I am very excited. I can just echo, uh, only echo what Christina said. And uh, I have turned down several offers to do Votan because it wasn't the right situation. And this one is the right situation with the perfect house and and uh, this wonderful creative team. And but also that we'll get to do them one a season and then do an entire cycle uh, later on. Is I, I think this was the best way for me to go about doing it for the first time. So this is just it's it's a dream come true, and uh, I am so excited to be working with. Christine again and being her father again <laughs> <laughs> and uh, working with Sir Andrew and, and looking forward to a uh, uh, first project with uh, Mr. Pountney. Great, thank, thank you Eric. Sir. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you'll have questions about the ring but let's come back to those after we complete our next announcement. As you know, we have a press conference scheduled for January 27th at which we will be announcing uh, our new season. However, the situation with one of our upcoming works for the 60th anniversary season, The Passenger, uh, by Mieczysław uh, Weinberg, is unique. This extraordinary work will be the final offering in Lyric's 60th anniversary season. It has the same creative team as our new ring, and so we thought it was appropriate to speak about it to you today while that artistic team is here in Chicago. The Passenger has its North American premiere tomorrow night, January 18th, at Houston Grand Opera. It will subsequently be seen by the Park Avenue Armory and the Lincoln Center Festival in New York uh, July 10 to 13 of this year. Those performances will be given in English in a translation by David. I first saw The Passenger in David's production um, in Bregenz in 2010, which was the piece's world staged premiere. I was so blown away by both the piece and the production that I immediately spoke to David about presenting it at Houston Grand Opera, where I was general director at the time. David and Johan Engels had been working with me in Houston the previous season and had alerted me to the piece, which is when I became aware of it for the first time. When we perform it here at Lyric, there'll be a number of differences between the performances this year uh, and ours. Um, the cast is almost completely different, and we'll be announcing details of our cast at the press conference uh, on January 27th. Houston will be performing it entirely in English, and we'll be performing it in multiple languages. This is the way it was done in, in Bregenz, uh, and I believe very strongly in the benefits of that. The piece was originally written in Russian, but David in Bregenz decided to have all the characters singing in their own languages. So the German characters sing in German, uh, the kind of Greek chorus of men will sing in Russian, uh, and through the course of the performance, we'll hear Polish, Yiddish, Greek, French, English, as well as German uh, and Russian. Let me give you a brief outline of, of the plot. It's set on an ocean liner in the early 1960s. A Walter, a West German diplomat, and Lisa, his new wife, are on board um, on their way to Brazil uh, for a diplomatic posting. A couple of days into the journey, Lisa goes absolutely pale when she thinks she recognizes a fellow passenger. Unbeknownst to her husband, Lisa, during the war, was an SS overseer in Auschwitz, and the passenger she thinks she recognizes uh, is Marta, a former inmate whose death she thought she had brought about. The stage action moves between two realms, from the pristine deck of the ocean liner on the upper level to the horrors of the death camp below. To give you a flavor of the piece, here are some brief excerpts from three scenes uh, from the Bregenz performances.
Feinberg's body of work is enormous, including many symphonies, oratorios, chamber music, songs, and a number of operas. The Passenger was commissioned by the Bolshoi in the early 1960s. It was completed in the mid-60s, but every attempt to produce it during the Soviet era, both in the Soviet Union and elsewhere in Eastern Europe, was suppressed by the authorities. Prior to the Bregenz World Staged premiere in 2010, it had been heard only in concert in Moscow in 2006. Weinberg was born in Warsaw in 1919. When the Nazis invaded Poland in 1939, he escaped to the east, because that was the only way out of Poland, and many of his family were murdered in the Holocaust. He moved to the Soviet Union. He became a victim of Stalin's anti-Semitic purges, survived becoming a great friend and colleague of Shostakovich and it's now clear that each was an influence on the other. People who love Shostakovich will respond immediately to the musical world of The Passenger. It's very mid-20th century. Much of the score is strikingly melodic, uh, while the music illuminating and animating the story is very clear in a very engaging way. As the son of an Auschwitz survivor, I have an instinctive suspicion of works of art that have been inspired by the Holocaust. Many of them seem to me to be melodramatic, simplistic, sentimental, but when I first saw and heard The Passenger, it impressed me profoundly that the piece presented an enormously complex and mature exploration of both victim and perpetrator. The guilt of Lisa, the perpetrator, is conveyed with tremendous impact and her gullibility is not in any way equivocal. David, speak to us for a few minutes about how you discovered Weinberg, the passenger, and how it came to be produced by you in Bregenz. Well, um, I, I had always bothered me that I didn't know the answer to the question, what came after Prokofiev and Shostakovich, and there seemed to me a kind of gap there. And um, I received a leaflet from... Um, a publishing house called Peer Music, which is actually, in fact, an American publishing house. Um, and on this leaflet, it said, um, Weinberg, friend of Shostakovich, opera about Auschwitz. And this leaflet was following many other such leaflets from my desk into the waste paper basket when I said, wait a minute, what? Um, and, you know, thank God for Google at that point, uh, which you know, I couldn't have done this in the 1970s if I'd stumbled across this work. Uh, you know, when I, when I started researching Weinberg, I was just amazed, first of all, by the, the quantity of music, which, which Anthony already mentioned. But then as I managed to kind of get hold of various Soviet-era recordings, um, I was incredibly impressed by the, by the quality of, of, of the music. Um, and there was then a slightly nervous phase when I began to look more closely at this opera because, as Anthony points out, uh, this is not a subject that will permit being treated in, in anything like a trivial or a mistaken or a tasteless way. And 
obviously in Bregenz, you know, we were in a way performing this opera to the grandchildren of the perpetrators. So um, this opera had to be right. And I was incredibly impressed by the intelligence of Medvedev, the librettist, who I then later met in Moscow and who was able to give me a vivid description of, of how he imagined it being staged. And unlike most cases, in this case, the director listened very carefully to the librettist and carried out his instructions, <laughs> uh, uh, and, you know, with, with the help of, with the help of Johan. Um, and I was equally impressed by the enormous subtlety and restraint of Weinberg's handling of the subject. And restraint is perhaps not the first word you use about most operatic compositions. Um, but it, I think it would have been painful if there had been kind of verismo grandstanding on this subject. And, and Weinberg manages to convey the power of the subject uh, with enormous subtlety. And finally, you know, the, the premise of the piece is actually extremely interesting because the premise of the piece is that you have two 19-year-old girls who meet at university and they should have squabbled over a boyfriend or helped one another with their homework. But instead, this university was Auschwitz and the one 19-year-old girl was on the side of the guards and the one 19-year-old girl was on the side of the prisoners. And it's about the relationship between those two incredibly young people in this ultimately extreme situation. And that is something that the storyteller and the composer uh, have captured in, in the most extraordinarily powerful way. Weinberg chose to tell his Holocaust story with a non-Jewish protagonist. Uh, Marta is not Jewish. She's a Polish nationalist, as is Tadeusz, her fiancé. And for me, the passenger is about the triumph of humanity against impossible odds. We actually know, never know whether Marta, the former inmate, has indeed survived Auschwitz um, uh, and is on the ship uh, that's transporting Lisa and Walter to Brazil, or whether she's a figment of Lisa's guilt. Uh, this is one of the mysteries uh, of the narrative. Andrew, you'll be conducting our performances of The Passenger. Tell us a little bit about your view of the piece. Well, it's interesting that, of course, the, um, the name of Shostakovich is, is bound to come up because there are considerable similarities of style. There's, there's, with Weinberg's music, there's the same sense of tremendous line and tension that you get in, in the great Shostakovich works. Um, but, um, and indeed, there's a great severity to a lot of the score, um, but also a, a, a sort of impetuosity about it <clears throat> that carries you along through, through the action. But some of the most remarkable, and as, as of course David said, there are, there are no arias, really, except at the very end, possibly, for, um, uh, at the very end of the opera. But um, there are some extremely tender and telling moments uh, as between uh, Marta and, and uh, Tadeusz, her, her fiancé, and there's one extraordinary compositional stroke of <coughs> genius in the work in which Tadeusz, who is a violinist, starts to play the Bach Chaconne. And this is eventually taken over by the rest of the orchestra and, 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 and comes to a huge climax, which is emotionally one of, one of the most um, uh, powerful mo moments in the opera. So there's a great, um, there's tremendous imagination in the way Weinberg treated this text, but there's also this wonderful sense of the, of the inevitability of the action as, as we see it unfold. I'm very much looking forward to it. So, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our presentation. Um, we'll be happy to take any questions from uh, the media on either the ring uh, or the passenger. Um, or media outlet. Thank you. Well, thank you, Anthony. Andrew Patner, Chicago Sun-Times and uh, WFMT Radio and WFMT.com. Uh, two things. One, could you say something about uh, projected costs and 
you, you obviously have a, an initial major commitment from the grosses. Um, what do you see as necessary to bring this about, and how might that compare or contrast with a recent uh, highly discussed production uh, that took place in, on the west side of Manhattan? Um, and secondly, uh, in terms of this intriguing conjunction, uh, does it say something positive, perhaps, about the 21st century that we're able to sit without special ceremony and talk about both a Holocaust-related uh, and inspired opera and a new production of Wagner's Ring. Thank you. Um, so far as your question on costs are concerned, it's too soon um, to be specific. The production hasn't yet been designed. Um, inevitably, um, productions of the ring are, are a major financial undertaking, but they also give major opportunities um, for contributed support. Um, that's obviously something that we'll be monitoring and pursuing with, with great care uh, as the production um, evolves uh, and develops. Um, the coincidence of um, today's announcement is uh, actually purely because um, the production team are, are the same for both The Ring and The Passenger. Um, we weren't seeking to make any sort of point by juxtaposing the, the, the two operas. Um, David, do you want to say a word or two about that? Well, um, I mean, I th obviously the implication of your question um, relates to Wagner's own evident anti-Semitism and the way in which his music and his works were subsequently misused. Um, I, I would give another example. One of my f most favorite composers is Janacek. I happen to know that, well, we now know that actually Janacek behaved abominably to his wife through many, many years. Um, so the personal deficiencies of a, a composer don't necessarily imply that his works are them, themse themselves in the same way deficient and it would be uh, a very distorted judgment to take some of Wagner's ill-advised prose and use that as a way of, of, of attacking the ring which is an incredibly great philosophical and cultural statement not least about love itself. Yes. Wynne Delacoma, Musical America. I have a question, I think, for the production team in terms of uh, having maybe a, worrying about a disjunct narrative. Or will we be seeing things like perhaps each of the stories set in different eras? Will there be a different visual look, or is it too early to tell? Well, uh, I think it's too early to tell in detail, but um, it's very clear, I think, from the music and the drama that... Uh, Siegfried is in a wildly different world from Rheingold. Uh, that difference I see, we all see as a team as, as being an enrichment and we're keen to that this 24 hours of musical drama which we will end up presenting um, should be as varied as the original work is. So um, you know, in our, in our work together, and I would like to emphasize, this is very much a, a, a team effort. Um, one of the things that, that makes it fun for us to work together is that we, we don't work in a compartmentalized way. Uh, Fabrice will comment about things that have nothing to do with the lighting and Marijan, nothing to do with the costumes. And, and you know, we all chip in and, and take part in the, in the evolution of, of, of the way in which we seek to realize this work. And that's something that, that you know, that's a practice that we've honed over, over many years. So, um, I, you know, I think diversity is something to be applauded in the case of The Ring. Uh, can I just chip in there, because I, I, I completely agree, musically there's such an enormous journey that's been traversed from, from Rheingold to go to Demerung, as you mentioned earlier, and the fact that the, the sound worlds are quite different it seems to me to be a very good idea to actually bring in the concept of, of making the, their visual um, counterparts uh, equally different. Clearly there will be a narrative that goes through and, 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 and things that hold the piece together. But I, I, th I like, I was always very much attracted when David first talked to me about this, the idea that um, there, will, there, will be, there will be kind of different looks that, that actually then culminate in something that will presumably be very awe-inspiring for, 
for the for the grand finale, so to speak. <laughs> I, I very much doubt that that will be necessary. <laughs> <laughs> yes, suspicious cackle from my right. <laughs> um, we have a question, thanks to the web streaming, from uh, F. Paul Driscoll, who's the editor-in-chief from Opera News, uh, who's watching the press conference live uh, with his colleagues in New York. Um, his question is, uh, you referred to the ring, this is aimed at me, you referred to the ring as a formidable challenge for any company that chooses to present it. If you had to name the ring's single biggest challenge, uh, what would it be? I guess the way I would answer that is that for such a complex piece, balancing the priorities of the piece is a, an enormous challenge. Um, combining the narrative clarity with the need for interpretive depth, um, combining spectacle with intimacy, um, co combining variety with the need for cohesion, um, as we've just talked about, um, the, the fact that the ring uh, really does need to take different views of its four component parts and yet find a, a cohesive whole is, I think, something that represents uh, an enormous challenge for, for any production. Um, Andrew, what, what's your biggest challenge in terms of embarking on a ring? Well, you know, it's... No problem, really. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, of course, the <laughs> musically, one has to make it uh, all of a piece out of its diverse parts, and so to watch the development of the characters, to watch the the the, the music gradually acquire greater um, virtuosity, greater depth is is one of the, the, the things that's fascinating about it. But, um, you know, I, I, I did the ring here, of course, the last time, and, and um, you know, people said to me, well, what's going to be different? And the answer is I don't really know, because I'm going back to the ring as though I've never seen or heard it before. I think and that's the, what, what one has to do. Indeed, I do that, really, with every piece I ever conduct. I, I, you know, I, I remember Toscany was once asked, he said, Maestro, you must conduct the Eroica Symphony many times. I don't suppose you need to worry about studying. And he says, I sleep, he said, I sleep with it under my pillow. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, we all, uh, whatever we do, we try to, to, um, to look at it afresh. And, um, but the, big, the, the challenge of the ring musically is, is, uh, is, is to make that, great arch, of course, that, that, that there's a sort of inevitability about the, 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 its progress. And, of course, you need a great cast, and we're going to have one. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um, and, uh, no, I, and I, 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 I'm, I'm not nervous about it, actually. It's, it's funny. I call it hubris, call it what you will. I just, I just can't wait to get my hands on it again. <laughs> Christine, singing Brunhilde, Walk in the Park? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's something that I didn't dare hope to do when I first started singing. Um, my very first Wagner role, I was singing the third Norn, and this is the best role in all of Wagner. You get 20 minutes of music, walk off stage, get a check, and go home. <laughs> and they're there for hours. But the other two were in their dressing rooms picking up their checks, and I would stand on the side of the stage and watch the beginning, watch the prologue of Götze Dämmerung, and think, oh my God, if someday, just once, I could do this. And... <laughs> Some day has arrived, which is Me remarkable. Um, I think that obviously there are great challenges that come along with this role. The drama of this role, the character, it's probably one of the greatest roles dramatically that a soprano could be handed. She is a remarkable character going from a petulant teenager to a worldly wise woman and has experienced every emotion which is something that she wasn't privy to when she started. Um, as far as vocally, slightly challenging, uh, I would have to say probably endurance is obviously a factor, but I think the greatest challenge is having to compete with the ghosts of everyone that has come before. Hmm. And I am really determined to just do something that is ours and not be concerned with what has come before. 
Eric, you're a very experienced Wagnerian, but this will be your first <coughs> Wotan. Um, what, what, what do you anticipate <laughs> the challenges for you being in preparing a role like this? Well, the challenge for Wotan is to keep straight all the names of children and baby mamas. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, but it's funny, I, you say I'm, I'm an experienced Wagnerian, and, and uh, not so much. Actually, uh, the Alvarez was the first time. Uh, the the uh, Dutchman and the Valkyrie Hundings, of which you spoke, they were in concert. So I'm still getting my feet wet and still trying to know how to inhabit this world, this, this sonic world, and uh, learning how to pace oneself, and but also learning how to pace oneself in rehearsal, too, and, and having a team that lets you pace yourself in rehearsal and try to find uh, where it is that you can, because you can, you can go to other people and ask for their opinions and the votons of the past of, oh, you know, in this place, this, you know, such and such was a problem here. You might want to rest here. But at the end of the day, everybody's different. And, and like Christine was saying before that we need to find our own way of doing this piece together and, and to uh, pursue it as if it's being done for the very first time, and uh, which which is very exciting. But I I am not blind to the fact that we are there is a history of this piece that uh, many people they've seen many wonderful performances, but um, hopefully they will come and see ours and see an equally wonderful performance. Thank you. Next, please. Oh, when? Yeah. I have another question uh, okay. for Christine. What are the dates of the Houston and Metropolitan Rings? I don't actually have the dates for the Metropolitan Rings yet. They are not next year. That's what I've got for that. Um, the I couldn't give you exact dates uh, about Houston. I can tell you that Rheingold is happening this year, and it's one per year from there. So uh, Valkyrie is uh, 15, 16, 17. Uh, for Siegfried and Gotthard Emmerung. Uh, Andrew Patner again. And you also have a standalone Valkyrie that was announced yesterday, I think, in Toronto. Is that right? Coming up next year? For me? Yeah. Oh, yes, absolutely. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, sorry, Christine. <laughs> I thought somebody else does too. No. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> right. Wow. The, it, the, they're going to battle it's it out. Everyone's doing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, it was announced it yesterday. It will be Andrew's first Brunhilde. Yeah. It, it will be, technically, yes, exactly, which is going to be fantastic. But it will be your first Brunhilde. Yes, yes in, ish. On stage, uh, ish. On, technically, with, I was um, engaged to do uh, concerts of um, Die Valkyrie in um, um, New Zealand with the New Zealand Symphony. And when I arrived, it became semi staged. And by the time we finished, it was fully staged, basically. So this is the first time with sets and lights. It's like they're 20%. Who do what? See, I know I've got I got it under control. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I could do math, but <laughs> we worked together a long time. He knows me. Um, but yeah, this is uh, the the game becomes that this is the first uh, production with sets and costumes, and I'm terribly excited to finally get on my feet and get my breastplate on and do it. <laughs> Next, please. Dennis Polko from uh, New City. Um, I'm curious, Sir Andrew, you mentioned um, that the cast had been announced, but at least unless I'm missing something, I think only two members of the cast yeah, speak up. Come here. have been announced. And uh, so I'm just curious, is, are, are we, do we know everything there is to know at this point, or is there something, you know, a reason for holding back at this point? Uh, you know everything we're going to tell you at this point. Um, we're, we're, we're announcing only Christine and Eric today, and other members of the ring cast will be announced in due course when we announce the details of the seasons in which each opera is going to take place. But that would lead us to believe, then, that most of the details of casting have been determined? Well, you would expect us not to be lazy. Um, we're, we're working hard on a project as important as The Ring to put it together with the world-class cast that, that we know you expect and that we plan to give you. Thank you. Richard Gavello, Opera Canada. For Miss Gerke, 
Will this be your first Siegfried and Goethe Dämmerung Brunhildes, or will the Mets come first? Oh, now I have to do Mets. See, this is the problem. Uh, the Mets will not come first. Uh, I, I believe it will be going. Houston, Houston is certainly first. the first, but uh, Houston and COC will. Uh, the Valkyries are there, but Houston is definitely the first uh, Siegfried and Goethe Dämmerung before this happens. Um, I think you need a, a microphone. So, Susan? Actually, oh, you've got them. Mic. I bring them on. Well, I, I can just say that uh, the process of a ring is, a, is really the product of a, of a team, of, a creative, of the whole creative team. And, um, and, you know, and this, we're at this point where we're all putting, bringing the ingredients together for, for our big dish or cake that we're going to present you. So for, for us, it's, it's, it's early days, but, uh, but we know the direction. We feel the discussions we've had between ourselves. Um, it's, been, it's been out of experience. We've, we've had almost a tele, you know, uh, instinctive working together on productions. We bring together so many different uh, views to it that uh, this is still the process that we're doing. We still preparing the ingredients for our ring. Thank you. marie Fabrice? Uh, well, I will just go along with uh, what Johan said at the moment. Uh, in uh, all our specificities, um, uh, we are not down to the details that we will develop individually, but more into uh, trying to find what the, the flavor of uh, the concept will be in order for us to find a common language. And from that point, then, we'll develop the specificity of each of our talents. So, so we are at that point. Uh, we've met uh, many times, and we have some very, very uh, good ideas uh, that are uh, in our books at the moment. And this will, we believe, strongly lead to, to some very and unique design. Anyone else? Yes. Uh, Wet Moser, Chicago Magazine. Um, you've talked a little bit about um, the the technical challenges that will come up in uh, you know in this years long process. Um, I was wondering if uh, and this is for for uh, anyone, including the the production staff, if you could talk a little bit about your relationship to Wagner when uh, in the ring when you're off the clock as opera listeners. Is there such a thing as off the clock with Wagner? <laughs> <laughs> Christine, would you no, like just, to uh, no, start? Sure. I, there's, with something this epic, the, the learning and the studying of, of pieces like these, they begin years before you even consider getting a contract for them. And there, there's kind of no off the clock. There are books to read. There's librettos to translate. There are historical things that you need to research, uh, all before you even consider picking up a score. So... Um, this has been years in the making for me, so I don't know how everyone else reacts to that question. David? Well, I'd like to pick up that phrase, off the clock, because um, it, it reminds me that one of, the, one of the most central issues in dealing with the ring is actually the management of time. Mm. Uh, the time is one of the most extreme elements in the ring. And for us, for example, um, one always has to be aware that any idea that you happen to have that, that might be a good idea has to also stand exposure for 20 minutes while that scene goes on. And there are lots of good ideas that are very good for two minutes, but not <laughs> for 20. Uh, so it's a completely different mindset and the way that you evaluate the development of your ideas always has to have the consciousness of this time management uh, built into it. Yes. Marie-Jeanne, you've, this is the second ring on which you're now embarking. Um, what, what's your relationship with Wagner? Uh, well, actually, the, the, the first uh, Wagner production uh, we did, uh, David and I, was Rienzi for the um, Wiener Staatsoper. So that was an enormous opera 
with about sort of like 500 costumes. And um, uh, our team here has been uh, working on lots of productions together, which is, I think is needed for a project this size. Uh, it's very interesting to be doing the ring again. It's going to be very different, obviously, because the production team is very different. It's early days, like uh, Johan said. It's still work in progress. Uh, it's an enormous project. It's like a gigantic opera in four acts with um, a very inward sort of looking sort of gigantic um, uh, magnifying glass where all, you know, where all the characters are principles. That's all I can tell you at this point. It's a huge opera where you're looking at, you know, I can put like 50 principles in it. So that's, um, that's, the, uh, that's the expand of, 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 of work and of, um, of my vision at the moment, yeah. Anyone else? Yes. Nancy Mallett, Chicago on the Isle. Uh, I'd like to ask a bit more about the clock, if I may. Here we are about two and a half years out from when the ring, when, when Rheingold will open. And so what does that mean in terms of uh, uh, sketches that may already exist and so forth? What, what actually has occurred at this point? And furthermore, when uh, the uh, uh, Rheingold begins, where will you be in relation to the other three operas? Will the concept for all four be fairly nailed down before that downbeat begins? David. Uh, well, we've, in, in the course of our time here, and the reason why we're here, apart from being here at this press conference, we've talked to the Lyric Opera uh, about our outline ideas. Uh, we will be developing those in great detail over the rest of this year, and we intend to present a complete set of ring designs uh, at the beginning of December of this year. Uh, so at that point, um, the Lyric Opera will know what it's in for. <laughs> <laughs> and um, no doubt they'll be passing a large tin around. Uh, um, but that's, that, that <laughs> that's the... Um, that's the time scale. I think it's very important, both from a creative point of view and a financial management point of view, to know the entity from day one. Um, I, I, I think it's, it's very important that um, we all understand the development of the cycle, um, both in order to be able to appreciate its component parts, but also to be able to uh, assess its impact as a whole. I think there was another question. Hi. Um, this is a follow-up question to things that have been raised earlier, but it's, it's an unusual time to be doing a ring in that, you know, we've mentioned the Met, but there's also the Occam Fryer production in L.A. Do you feel a sense, this is for the creative team in general, a sense of trepidation or is, do you feel that because of what's gone by in the last six years or so that maybe you're, you would need to approach the ring in a different manner than, I mean this is not meant in a negative way, just like do you feel like, oh, you know, <laughs> I, I, I maybe can't give full reign to what I might have wanted, well, I, I don't know, but just, I think let me just my question, sorry start and then I'll, I'll hand over to my colleagues. I, I, I think uh, as a major opera company, it's part of our responsibility to explore the core repertory on a regular basis. Um, and exploring it on, in new productions um, requires us and the artists that we engage to lead the interpretations to um, understand these pieces, to juxtapose them against um, uh, the experiences of our time, uh, and to interpret them in ways that are as vivid and exciting and accessible and moving uh, as possible for our audiences. Um, I've said in the past that the more famous the piece, the more challenging it is to create a new production of that piece. But it's a challenge that, as uh, a major opera company, Lyric absolutely relishes. You know, it's sort of a measure of the work that, um, you know, the, the possibilities of what one can do with it are endless. Um, and, you know, the, Every kind of production of The Ring has been seen from the most realistic to, to the least and uh, the most uh, contemporarily irrelevant, if you like to say, uh, and, and the, the most sort of mythic. 
So there, there is an enormous um, room for manoeuvre in this piece, and that's what, this, uh, in a way, it's, it's, uh, it's the greatest challenge of it, is to pick where you're going to go, isn't it, David? Mm -hmm. is, is it? Yes. And, I mean, in the context of America, I mean, it's always rather surprising to, for, for us to think that, you know, having just flown from Houston to Chicago... Um, if we did that journey in Europe, we'd be going from London to Moscow. Uh, and and it, it, underneath that flight, there would be a great many different rings that you could drop in on from smaller houses to larger houses and from crazy concepts to, to all, all kinds of different interpretations. So I think there's certainly room, there's always room to... to enter this wonderful imaginative canvas that Wagner has put down and, and, and find out what reflections it, it stirs in us at this particular moment and for this particular team and this particular audience. Any questions about the passenger? Any other questions about anything that comes to your minds? Well, within reason. <laughs> In which case, um, let me thank you all for coming. Um, let me thank all my colleagues here and uh, virtually here, Eric, um, very much for joining us today. I, I hope y you can sense the collective cumulative excitement that is um, being generated uh, around me um, uh, about both these uh, fantastically interesting projects. Uh, we look forward very much to um, continuing work on The Passenger, to embarking on uh, this fantastic enterprise of a new production of The Ring, uh, and from time to time to um, touch base with you all and update you uh, as to how things are going. Thank you for being here, and thank you for your interest. <laughs> <laughs>